Hello everyone! Welcome to this tutorial where we will discuss step by step how to evaluate a clinical research article about the risk of developing a disease. In this time, we will discuss an article in a nested case control study that relates prediabetes and cardiovascular risk, recently published in the Journal of Atherosclerosis. We will follow the OPMER guide, which we saw in a previous unit. The first step of the guide is to identify the objective, evaluate how precisely it is defined, and check its congruency with the study design. It is necessary to identify the primary objective, in this case, to examine the risk of presenting a cardiovascular disease by having persistent prediabetes for four years, compared to people with persistent normal glycemia in the same period of time. Is it clear how we will do it? We will see. As we have seen, disease risk studies are mainly obtained from two types of design, the prospective cohort study or a retrospective case control study. The nested case control study is a special study design, since both the cases and the controls belong to a prospective cohort from where they are extracted for provisional information subject to having the complete data of the court that usually lasts longer. Although, by definition, case control studies are retrospective and there is no way to control exposure to risk factors, this is an example where such control exists, given that both cases and controls were included in a court before the outcome event. At this time, we can evaluate the first point of the OBMER guide. This is, does the objective adequately describe the patients, their pathology, and the clinical condition in their study? State your score. Is the outcome variable adequately described and how will it be measured? State your score. Does the variable in the objective allow us to identify the type of methodological design used? Yes. State your score. As can be read in the article, the data was obtained from a cohort of workers included in the Japan Epidemiology Collaboration of Occupational Health, where every year they receive a general evaluation. It is important to review the data related to the court, for example, from what point in time a person is included in the court. According to the article, almost all workers in Japan are required to do an annual checkup which includes laboratory analysis and health questionnaires. So it can be concluded that the beginning of the work constitutes the point of inception of the core. The follow-up period is between 2000, 2008 and 2017. It is very likely that this court has an even longer follow-up period, so that more data will eventually be generated. It is necessary to note that the study subjects start the court at different ages and with different health states. So, it becomes very important to ensure that at the beginning of the court, the subjects do not suffer from the disease that will be taken as an outcome. From here, we can identify those that will be defined as cases, the ones that present a cardiovascular disease, and as controls, the ones that do not present a cardiovascular disease. The risk factor will be having or not prediabetes. Both exposure and outcomes must be well defined. In this example, the exposure is persistent prediabetes defined as fasting plasma glucose of 100 or to 125 milligrams per deciliter or an HbA1c of 5.7 to 6.4 percent for four continuous years before the onset of the cardiovascular event. Since it is a case control study, the way in which someone is defined as a case and as a control has to be determined. The cases were obtained from a disease registry with the same court constructed from the medical certificates granted by the doctor of the company where they work or by a family, family report. For this study, the cases were all those workers who presented at, the same, at some time of the follow-up a myocardial infarction or a cerebrovascular event. It is important to note that there are incident cases, that is, 
people who at the beginning of the court had no signs of cardiovascular disease. Thus, from a court of over 1,000 people, 197 new cases of cardiovascular disease, 137 of stroke, and 60 myocardial infractions appeared. This is one of the reasons to design a case control study nested in a court. <coughs> the incident of new cases is expected to be very small in a short period of time. If reported as a court study, the incidence of cardiovascular disease in people with persistent prediabetes against persistent normal glycemia will be compared. But since in a, it is a case control study, the prevalence of persistent prediabetes is reported in cases with cardiovascular disease against those without cardiovascular disease. Hence, the importance of seeing that selection of the controls. For each case, people who share the same age, sex, and workplace were selected within the same cohort. In this way, a pool of controls was created. At the time of the analysis, five controls were randomly selected for each case, that is, 675 controls. Here it is important to note that the authors of the study performed an additional filter to those cases and controls. They excluded from the primary analysis all those who, although they had prediabetes for four years before, they did not have it one year before the cardiovascular event, either because they became normoglycemic or diabetic, and also excluded all those who being normoglycemic four years before became hyperglycemic one year before the outcome. This ensures that genuine persistent prediabetic subjects are being compared against persistent normoglycemic subjects. In relation to statistical analysis, it must be ensured that it is related to the objective and the design. In this sense, the most common thing in a clinical study is to perform a regression analysis, where the weight of a set of independent variables is determined on a final output variable. Remember that it is about using the equation of the line, where j is the output variable, in this case, having or not having a heart attack or stroke. As you can read, a type of logistic regression was used. This means that the event of interest is the icotomous. The patient has it or has not. And also the time of appearance of the outcome is not incorporated. In this case, a Cox regression will have been used. This is justified because the story period is not very long. Four years for a cardiovascular risk study is really a short time. Because it is a study to estimate a risk measure of a multi-determined chronic degenerative disease, such as myocardial infarction and stroke, a fundamental point is to observe the way in which the authors control the confusing variables, confounding. Remember that a confuser is a variable that is related at the same time with the risk of factor, prediabetes, and the outcome, which is cardiovascular disease. An example in this study is dyslipidemia, which is associated with prediabetes but, on the other hand, with cardiovascular disease. Since this association may be independent, it is possible that when estimating the risk of prediabetes, we are actually seeing the hiding effect of dyslipidemia. One of the advantages of the regression analysis is that it is possible to include the confoundings in the equation of the line and thus be able to control the effect that the confusion has on the effect we want to observe. As can be seen, this study included as confusing variables, in addition to dyslipidemia, body mass index, smoking, and hypertension. The authors made two models of analysis. One model, number one, did not include the confusers, while in model number two, the adjustment was carried out. This means that model two is very strict and therefore will be the one that should be taken into account for the conclusions. Another aspect of the statistical analysis that should be reviewed is in relation to the calculation of the sample size. In case control studies, it is often difficult to predict the number of cases, precisely because they are fewer. The incidence in this score was approximately 0.1%. Then, the opposite exercise is done. Once determined how many cases I have, it is possible to measure the statistical power that is reached in order to observe a previously related risk of 2. That is, that prediabetes doubles the risk of disease. 
In other words, the risk of committing a type 2 risk not being able to observe a real difference is 73%. Although the power is less than recommended, 80%, this will be only important if the results of the study were negative. Now we can evaluate point 4 of the upper guide. Are the variables and how to measure them adequately described? State your score. Is the inter and inter observer repetitivity list assessments adequately described for the different variables, kappa, inter class correlation coefficients, and Bland and Alman limits? State your score. Are the randomization, regression, or adjustment methods of variables used adequately described? State your score. Is it different from ours? Let's check it. Now we go to the statistics analysis. Is, there the, is the normality analysis adequately described or, if applicable, the use of non-parametric analysis? State your score. Is there coherence between the objective design and the statistical test used? If confusion control is required, are the regression models used and their usefulness to control the confusion of coverage and to answer the objective and adequately describe? State your score. Is it different from ours? Let's check it. Tables and graphics should be enough to analyze the results. In a good article, it is not necessary to read the text. Table 1 must show the variable bivariate data of the population study, that is, the cases and the controls. A quick view of this table shows that the cases have more dyslipidemia, more hypertension, more hyperglycemia, more diabetes, and a higher percentage of smokers. This is precisely the reason to design a multivariable analysis, because there are many differences between cases and controls, and in order to determine the effect of prediabetes, those other factors have to be isolated or controlled. <clears throat> Bivariate analysis does not distinguish the independent effect of each variable, given the possibility that its effect depends on the effect of other variables. When talking about re logistic regression, the product will always be odds ratio, OR, which, from a certain sample size, is equivalent to a relative risk. Table 2 shows the results of OR. Here we are only interested in the effect that compares persistent prediabetes against persistent normal glycemia over 4 years, under Model 2 which, as already mentioned, includes confusion factors, and that is why the ORs are lower. The result of this study is that the presence of persistent prediabetes increases the risk of having a heart attack or stroke 2.62 times. The 95% confidence interval let us know that this OR is significant since it does not cross a unit, that is, we can say with 95% certainty that persistent prediabetes is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. On the other hand, it allows us to know the strictest margin, which in this case is 1.3. This means that in the best risk scenario, it even implies a 1.3 fold increase in the risk of CPD. In the worst of these scenarios, the risk is as high as 5.25. While there are other additional results, the one that matters most to us is the primary outcome. The rest of the results can be omitted unless they contain information that allow us to generate new hypotheses. For example, Table 3 shows the OR generated in two different ways of measuring prediabetes. It can be concluded that the measurement by glycosylated hemoglobin is more sensitive to detect cardiovascular risk. In fact, the measurement of prediabetes with plasma glucose generates an OR that is not statistically significant. If this had been the only way to measure prediabetes, the result of this study would have been negative. Now, it is time to finish the evaluation with the OMER guide and have a total measurement of the quality of the clinical research article and what does this mean. Are you ready? So. Is the difference between the groups in comparison adequately described and confidence intervals added? 
state your score. To the graphics and charts included allow us to easily interpret the characteristics and difference found. Are confidence limits included? State your score. Does the description of their results consistently resolve the question and objective raised in this study? State your score. Finally, we can have a final score, which in our case is 17. This makes a very good article with sound methodology so we can be assured that the results are consistent and reproducible and we can take them into account for treating our patients or calculated or estimated their risks. Thanks for seeing this.